hey what's going on everybody i'm in my hotel room as you can see just trying to wind down from the weekend uh, i'm at the international musician summit in north carolina just got finished playing today at the concert uh, and did some clinics on friday and thursday some bass clinics so uh, it was absolutely nuts crazy amazing guitarists musicians drummers keyboardists so i just wanted to talk about one thing so i got a lot of questions this weekend about tone and how to go about achieving the sound that you want so i just want to talk a little bit about that today with my tone i just choose to have a flat sound even when i'm going through an amp so most times my settings on uh most i'm going to be using a gk amp most of the time but any other amp too that will still apply so i'm using a flat setting so i can actually control most of my EQ from my bass. So this bass actually just does a good job um, with EQ as well. I just like it flat, but if I need some more treble, I need I can just use or push the treble up. Uh, if I need some more bass, I can, you know, I have room to do that. The reason why my sound is flat is so I can control it if I need more, depending on the situation that I'm in. And sometimes it's different if I'm touring or doing a big show in a big theater, or if I'm doing a club gig or, um, you know, one of the small, you know, <laughs> venues that you play at, uh, no matter where it be or at, ch at a church service or anything like that. So it might differ from where you are. Uh, so sometimes you might need less bass, sometimes you might need more bass, right? So in this instance, I have oh, everything flat right now. So bass is flat, treble is flat, and the pickup blend is between both pickups. So. <laughs> all right so everything is flat so just say i need it just a little bit more treble so let's 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 jack that treble up so see the, the harmonics come out a little bit more So it come out a little bit more, the high end is a little bit more boosted. So let's see if I needed a little bit more bass. So let's crank the bass up along with the treble. So, so that's with the bass boosted just a little bit. So you can hear the difference and please be wearing headphones because uh, if you're watching this on a phone or uh, even an iPad, sometimes it doesn't do it justice. So listen to this with headphones and you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about. Now let's let's boost that mid, mid, mid range up a little bit uh, along with the bass and the treble. And let's see that just kind of gives it that little that oomph that you need. Sometimes uh, in my experience, if you can't hear yourself on stage, <laughs> you can't uh, get in touch with the sound man immediately because sometimes we have problems with that. I know I've experienced many problems with trying to, hey, hey, over here, over here, sound man, over here, monitor guy. <laughs> you can't get the bass up in your monitor. So sometimes when you need a little bit more oomph, you know, you turn that mid range up just a little bit and that should do the trick sometimes those frequencies just push out the bass a little bit more to be able to help you fit in the mix well so sometimes i'll i will result to just bringing that mid-range up just a little bit so let's see this <laughs> so that's with it flat now i'm going to boost it a little bit okay so you see the difference that that makes it might not be a, a huge difference but trust me when you're like on stage or you're plugged into an amp try it trust me keep your amp settings flat try to control the eq of your bass from your bass so one reason why i like to do that is because i don't want to be fiddling with the amp settings and turning around completely 180 uh during a show or during a performance to try to mess around with my amp settings so when you have the controls right here excuse me, right here at your fingertips. It makes it that much easier. Now to address the question about developing your own EQ, your, your own sound, your own tone, most of that comes from 
each person's hands. Everybody is different. Uh, some some people might have longer fingers, shorter fingers, longer nails. So some of the sounds are going to be sounding different anyway, uh, just because of the anatomy, the physical anatomy of your hands. So while that is a factor, there are some things you can do to develop your sound. Uh, it's just depending on what you like. Listen to some records that you would like. Uh, some of your favorite bass players, uh, listen to them. Listen to the sound, um, especially if they do anything solo. That'll be easier to kind of pick out their sound. So if you find a sound or a bass player sound that you like or that you favor, try to imitate that as closely as possible. Uh, if you like that sound, if you want to tweak it a little bit, you can. But once you find that exact sound, and what I would do, sometimes I would sit at home, even still now to this day, uh, when I'm getting ready to record, just trying to make sure I have the, the best sound or the best tone or EQ, I'll sit down and make sure my tone is perfectly set, my treble is perfectly set, my uh, the balance between my two pickups are perfectly set, uh, bass, mid-range, everything. I'll sit there and I'll... Uh, every single combination that I possibly can come up with, even if I'm not that knowledgeable, uh, anybody can do this. Uh, just this is what I did when I first started learning to EQ my bass. I would sit there, turn each knob up, turn each knob down, turn the next knob up along with that knob up or turn it down, back down, turn that knob back down. But so you see every single combination that I can come up with and I would play every single time I would change something. So it took a long time. It's a long process. It's a long, tedious process, but um, I'm still actually developing my sound now after all of these years because I used to just play just passive um, before. So now I play it active a lot um, uh, in an active setting. Um, and it's a different, it's a difference. It's a little bit more of a hotter signal when you're playing active. But anyway, those are just some things that you can do to develop your sound. Find something that you like. Find, uh, if there's two people that you like. You like their sound, you wanna get it right in between. Uh, there's there's higher in or higher pitch to their sound or, or some treble frequency, those higher frequencies. Maybe you wanna dial it down just a little bit but still have that same essence that they have. You know, it's just personal preference. You know, I'm not gonna tell you this is the way you should EQ your bass because sometimes even now when I, sometimes that I like everything is flat but the mid-range the mid-range is boosted just a little bit to give it a little bit more body um, the bass is boosted just a little bit um, the treble is like maybe a little bit more than halfway so it's, it, it varies too depending on if I'm recording or if I'm, I'm in an amp so it's, it's a little bit different but you have to figure out what your sound is you have to know what you like those are just a few tips I'm gonna go more in depth with passive or active basses or just a bass that has the ability to be passive or active um, the settings in an EQ is just a little bit different and I discussed that a little bit in some EQ lessons and tutorials that I've done I can't remember the name I'll probably put it up here uh, but anyway those are just a few tips. Take it and run with it. Hopefully that helped you guys out. When you're playing, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. And until next time, see you.